How's it going guys? It's your boy Fixit Daniel. And as you've seen from the thumbnail, we got something to talk about. Well, we failed on the couplers. So we're gonna sit down, we're gonna talk about it and explain why we failed and how it's okay. So guys, thank you for watching. If you guys have not seen my stuff or shows, please go down and like and subscribe. But today we are going to be talking about the couplers. So we, um, in the last video, if you have not seen this video, I posted it not too long ago. It was actually really good. People have been asking for it and hopefully the people who were asking for it that wanted to see it um, actually liked the video because I needed to do it as well as they wanted to see it. But I did do it. I did some also other cool things. But, um, there was some success and there was not some success. And one of the not success was, oh, these, the couplers. I tried to install these in. I had talked about them about maybe a, two, maybe three years ago. Um, in my previous video, when I first did it on my silver car, I wanted to install these, but I made a mistake by making the hole a little bigger. And then this time we got them and we uh, actually had just put them in. And we're going to talk about why they did not work. So let's sit down and we'll talk about it. All right. So campfire time. We're going to talk about these couplers, these couplers that I put in um, on my 08 Cadillac STS. So the theory was good, good theory. And it was an experiment. And all most of the experiments don't always work out the first time you do them. Not even a second third, fourth, fifth, or even 2000s time. Um, as we know through our history, we've all tried stuff. We've all tried experiments on things and they all didn't come out very uh, very great until uh, many, 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 many times in trials and error of trying different things and they ended up working out. But in this case, I only did it two times and it didn't work. <laughs> so the first time I did, I had taken the hole and reamed it out because I thought that it wasn't going to fit. So I went through all of the research and and diving and finding like three years ago into this, trying to replace this with this. And unfortunately, this ended up winning over this. Now it's not because of the reason because this is this is aluminum or um, a little bit more heavier metal and then this these i got the dimensions right everything lines up the holes fit um i know that probably happened to stack right but the holes fit perfectly everything lines up so my research was i'd say half right <laughs> so um after all the research these two do line up they do fit this is off of a toyota supra um, or a Lexus that has the same kind of setup as a Toyota Supra. Um, I got this off of eBay, whereas there's probably a discrepancy there with that. Um, but it did all line up with the coupler. This is the coupler off of, um, this is the same coupler that's on my 08 now, um, but this one's off of my um, my 2006. Um, they're the same, doesn't really much make a difference. They're all the same couplers. They all match up. You know, they usually kind of be about the same. I put the original couplers I took off the 08 back on um, because these were causing them to um, have my dry shaft vibrate. So um, after replacing the rear diff bushing, which you guys please go check it out. That was a really good video. I hope you guys liked it because that every time I do that, that thing is just amazing. I still can't believe I figured that out. And um, one of the things I like, I gotta go back to this. One of the reasons why I like doing that coupler is because nobody's doing it. The only time you see those rev shift couplers being put on with, they're on like BMWs because BMWs and, and Cadillacs are kind of the same motoring setups. I've, I've realized looking through this in the research for, for those bushings. Um, so the Cadillac, you know, they sell rev shift makes the bushing rear differential, differential, I can't talk, rear differential bushing for the um, Cadillac. They don't have many parts, but that's the main one that they got. And if you think about it, you can replace that. That was only like a $40, $50 part compared to the OEM one, which is probably a little bit more, and you'll have to change it frequently. Those rev shift bushings 
are guaranteed not to be replaced. Unless you're doing something crazy. Now, I get it if you were racing or drifting or doing anything where you'd beat the crap out of those rear end diff bushings. But if you're driving your car like normal every single day, you love your car, you work on your car, you maybe you, you, you know, put boost it, turbo it, or, or build it to where you want it, and you like the car, wouldn't it be optional to replace the bushings with something that you probably never have to replace the life of the car? And they're going to last forever forever um so i highly recommend you using those rev diff bushings um you don't have to go extreme as the green like i do i do that because i have the um roar pedal in the car and occasionally i like to get on it not hard just you know just getting on it like normal but the thicker it is the, the less of the bumping that you get now you could they do sell a like semi oem level one i think it's like 85 um under the green one there's a black one um you could stick that in there but i didn't i just went ahead and straight, went straight for the full aggressive one um that i know will fit and i know i never have to replace it if i keep this car for forever i know that that's one piece of, of the car that i know would never have to get replaced until you know till forever because if you don't beat on it and you just drive it like normal that thing will never will never degrade and never break down eventually yes it will break down but the chances of you breaking down you already would have wrecked the car or replaced the car if you got tired or bored with it that's what i mean by the car it running the life of the car it'll run as long as you have the car and you're not beating on it and you maybe give it a little bit of the beans and then a little bit of just some some driving miss daisy but if, you know, as long as you're doing it like that, and even if you did beat on it, I guarantee you that thing would still run in the life of the car because it's really an aggressive bushing. It's very dense, you polyurethane. It's really um, great. And I know I beat my dead horse about talking about it. I just can't get over how awesome that is. And um, it seems like I'm the only one on YouTube that's doing that, which I think that's pretty cool because that shows you something that you could do. You don't have to always replace it with the OEM one. Yeah, it's easier yeah, it makes more sense. And some people are like, why do I have to pay for that much money for something like that? Because it's inexpensive and it works the same way as you replacing the OEM one. You still have to pump, push it out. You still have to push out that cylinder. Now you got an open gaping hole. What are you going to stick it in there? An OEM or a rev shift bushing? So just highly recommend you guys checking that out. Um, I think that's really good for anybody who really likes to get on their vehicles to look into that. Okay, well, enough said about that. We're done talking about the rev shifts. It's in the car. It's done and gone. I probably won't talk about it anymore unless I'm replacing it again. So, um, back to the bushings, just to get this out the way. So, I put back on the OEM bushings. I did this last night. I finished it all up. Um, I had gone back and forth um, trying to figure out why was it vibrating. So, the issue was it's about about. About when takeoff, it would vibrate just a little bit, a little bit of tremor, and about 40 miles an hour, it would tremor a little bit more, but then but when you get past 40 miles an hour, 50, 60, 70, it didn't do it. It was perfectly fine, but it, it was a little nuisance because when you're around, driving around on the road, you're going like 45, 40, and the vibrating is not terrible, but you do feel the tremor, and it could be a little annoying, especially when the car was running really smooth before you did it. So anybody in their right mind would think, you know what, as far as much as I thought I would just deal with it, I, I really don't like it. So I didn't know what it was um, with the issue. I thought maybe my drive shaft was, um, was, was not put back together right. Um, so I did do replace my, uh, I take the drive shaft off and replace the bushing or the, uh, the, uh, the drive shaft um, bearing. So I pulled it apart. But then I kept second guessing myself, but I did mark it. I, I did, it's not like I didn't mark it. I would be worried if I didn't mark it, but I did mark it. I put a little scrape line on both ends of it and I was kept second guessing myself thinking that that was wrong. I almost turned it the wrong way. And then I said, nope, I'm right. This has to be the couplers. Cause it was, I marked it before I tore it apart and it's, it's right where it's supposed to be in my markings. And I verified it on both ends. They had some red markings and green markings, and they were all lining up. 
and everything was lining up like I was supposed to. So my only guess was these. So the, th the difference between this and this is weight and balance. So I believe these are, and these have directionals. They have arrow, they have little, um, they have like little arrows right here and here that tell you one goes this way and one goes the other way. So you have it balanced, right? This doesn't. This does have no arrows, no directionals, no nothing. So doesn't matter if you flip it, you kind of can't tell which side is which. And it probably isn't no side. You could just put it on however you want. So I believe that these are balanced and directional for a reason, obviously, because, you know, you want your drive shaft to run perfectly fine, right? You don't want it to be wobbling it all over the place. So um, it's been engineered a lot more better than this. This is just a, a eBay cheap part. You can get this anywhere. You can even get this on, you know, uh, Timu or or any other, you know, wish list or whatever site. So the difference with this is that it's just not balanced. Um, I don't think the weight would have been an issue. I believe it's the balancing because the difference between this and this is that when you put this on, this one, it's lighter. I can even feel it in my hand. It's a lot, it's a lot, um, it's a lot lighter. I think I'm, I uh, scaled it. It's, I can't remember how much the scale was, but this weighed less than this. So, um, uh, the difference was I think that this was just throwing off the balance of the drive shaft by adding more weight on each end of the of the of the drive shaft because one was on the was in front of the uh, differential and the other one was behind the transmission. So I think with it already in the the drive shaft is already balanced with its own weights and directionals and everything. So when I put this in the equation, it did not like it. Where this is super light, so basically it's balanced and directional, but it's so light that it doesn't it doesn't interfere with the the balancing of the drive shaft. It just it's just to hold it together. Where this one added just a little bit more weight enough to affect it. Now it could have been re re um, redone. Maybe put some weights on the in different directions on the drive shaft. But trying to do that and get that all working just to have this on there, um, it actually wasn't worth it. So it was more worth it just to go get another set of these, which I will eventually have to get some more because the rubber is a breaking around the um, around the actual couplers. It's not bad. It's just, just like this one. It's just showing your hairline cracks, and that's usually not good. Um, you don't want those. But it would last a little. It'll last a good longer time before I have to get them replaced. But I'm gonna replace them with some new ones anyway, just to just to fix that all together, and then we'll, they'll be good. But um. And then this, um, this one is actually not too bad, but I did actually, um, one of the things I forgot to use was I think on the, on the crushing sides here, uh, it actually cracked and, and messed up this urethane. This urethane is not the urethane from RevShift. I guarantee you if RevShift made inserts like this, this wouldn't have gotten destroyed. It would have been so hard and dense that it wouldn't have even made a dent into this. But since this wasn't from them and um, don't know the intensity of these urethane bushings, because they are urethane bushings. It's like, I think these are 85, but they make they must make different kinds of 85 um, grade um, urethane bushings. And these were a little bit softer, way softer than, than rev shifts. But um, uh, yeah, so these didn't work. I mean, it's okay. I'm not mad. Uh, two year, a two year project that I've been, I had been, I had done and stopped, waited years and years, and then now get back on it and pick up where I left off. It didn't work. N not a problem. I'm not mad about it at all. Um, I didn't, it didn't destroy the car. I didn't hurt the car. I didn't break anything. Didn't ruin anything. All I had to do is just replace these back with the OEM ones. So, um, but now the car runs great. The car runs super fast and smooth. No more vibration. No more at the light when I take off. There's no vibration at highway speeds. There's no vibration um, except for you know I gotta get the shocks and struts replaced because I feel I feel like a race car in that thing. I just feel every bump in the road. I gotta replace the shocks and struts, which that's coming soon in the video too. So I got those over there somewhere. I just gotta put them in. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to explain to you guys that. Um, that in that video um, with these, I didn't really talk too much about them. I just, I talked about them in the beginning and then um, a little bit in the middle 
and somewhat in the end of how I thought that I may have to replace them because I didn't think these were going to work when I felt that vibration. So, um, so yeah, it was a good idea. Good idea, good try. They have made some of these um, for Cadillacs a long time ago. This was way before I was even in Cadillacs. I would say in the maybe late 90s, early 2000-ish, they did make some couplers for the Cadillac. Um, I think it was for the STS-V, but you could use them. You probably could have used them on any other Cadillac. They did make them, but they're really hard to find. You can see pictures online that they actually did not rev shift, but a different company had made something like this, but maybe a little bit lighter and the bushings and all that stuff like that. But you can't find it um, unless I, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the site where they would sold them. Um, they, they were just more talking about what they did put in and what you could have done in the time that they had them. But there's no price. There's no website of, of anything to buy them. Um, uh, you could probably have them specially made if someone was a machinist, a good machinist enough to balance these and stuff like that. You could get them made, but, you know, going through that whole process, like what for? Just to put it on a regular car. Um, they do sell, RevShift does sell, you know, couplers, but they're morally for like the Corvette, the, the, um, the Camaro and, and stuff like that. They don't have, and the Pontiac GTO, but they don't have any for the Cadillac. Now the Pontiac GTO may mock up with those, but it's just it's just too much to go into for a non-replacement. And these are really easy to replace. I mean these these right here they're not hard to replace. I've done this is this is my second vehicle I've done it, and I think this is my fourth or fifth time, actually ten times. This is probably my tenth time taking these in and out from from the yep from the silver one to this one. I'd say probably about maybe five to ten times. I've taken these out. It's not hard to do. It's very quite easy. Once you got the logistics, how to take them out and everything, these are nothing to replace. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys how this didn't work. Boom, fail. Um, might be some good scrap metal because um, they are pretty weighty. Um, but um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty much for a, a Toyota Supra. Um, I don't know how that would have worked on a Toyota Supra. I don't know if the Supra, Toyota Supra has them balanced or they don't care. But um, maybe you have to add some extra weight to balance these out. Who knows? But um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to, um, I know it's really quite short. Um, I just wanted to explain to you guys a little bit more in depth of how the outcome started with this and went back to just using these. <laughs> so, um, but, um, but yeah, so these were a fail. These were a fail. Um, these didn't work out too great, but um, it's a good try, good effort. Uh, didn't cost a whole lot to do this. Just time and research and years of waiting to do it. But but now that I can conclude that, my it's just this total. That's just a total fail. Was a good idea, but we could we could go a little further with it and and try to get it balanced. But it's really not worth it. Um, it's just um, it's just a lot of that'd be a waste of time and effort just to just to replace it with this and then be done with it. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, got a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, I got a lot of good things coming up, um, to, um, uh, to do for the Cadillac. Uh, not too, too much. Um, I do have the shocks and struts that I need to put in. So if you guys want to see a video on how to put in your shocks and struts, um, let me know in the comments. I have a cool way that I don't think anybody is doing to take them out. Yet again, I got something pretty cool that I've looked online and the product is there, but I don't think no one knows that it's there. Every time I see everybody doing the suspension, like the suspension, you know, cramp, cramping, it's always uh, either the two little, you know, arm things. You put them on one side and they kind of crimp each other at the same time. Well, I got something a little more better than that. That'll take care of the whole entire thing in one shot. And I looked and researched online, and I didn't see anybody using it, which is surprisingly because it's so easy to use. I'm hoping that it's easy to use. I have not used it yet. I've had this thing over here for almost a year and a half and still haven't used it yet. Um, not because um, I don't want to. It's just because I haven't had the opportunity to. Um, so the the escapes needs shocks and struts too, but their shocks and struts, 
the struts in the front, the spring and stuff's already in it already. So you just take out the old one, one whole piece, and then put it back in. Where the Cadillac, you have to take, you have to separate it, separate the strut and the spring, take the old spring off and put it on the new one and put it all back together. So it's a little more in depth and um, and everything. There's there is a one whole piece for the Cadillac, but it's like the adjust like the um, like the adjustables where you can crank down the nut and lower it and raise it. I would love to do those, but they're like almost like what like like a thousand dollars. I think I've seen some as low as six. But um, if I'm gonna pay that much money, I would rather go air ride, which that's what I would really love to do. I would love to do air ride suspension. But um, that's almost like it's like two, three thousand dollars for that, for that setup. So, but um, but yes, uh, we will eventually get on that and do the shocks and struts. Um, and then um, I think that's there's a few more options on there. There's a few more um, extra extra things out there that I would like to do on it. Um, so if you guys want to see some stuff, please go down in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me think of some ideas. Um, that would be great. Um, I've helped a lot, a lot of people like the rear diff was one of the ones that people wanted to see. I had to do it anyway. And then a few other people wanted to know something on the escape. Whereas the, um, the, I think it was the, the temperature gauge and I found that for them and everything like that. So, um, so yeah, just let me know. Um, I'll do my best to do the video. Um, and then we'll go from there. But guys, I know it's really short. I just wanted to just explain to you guys what was going on and with everything with the couplers and um and that was pretty much it so um if you guys like this stuff please go like subscribe support me help me grow um i'm not the um i know i have a whole lot of crazy builds everything i have is something that you know i have i don't have the uh, the means and the effort uh, the money to do any cool epic stuff so um just have to be patient uh whenever stuff arises itself that's when it comes um, I would like to get something kind of cool with the scooter going. Um, if you guys still like to see your scooter stuff, please let me know. Um, I was doing my friend's scooter thing, but um, no one seems to be interested in that. So I will do just progress videos through shorts. Um, I don't think I'll do another, I probably won't do another video on that until it's completely done. Like when it's almost getting stuff home, we're about to ride it. I may do another video of putting everything together, like in like time lapse mode. I don't know, something like that. Um, but um, I really want to get this done for him. Um, uh, it's you know that way he can have it, enjoy it before the summertime gets here. That would be the kind of cool thing. So we're almost there. Just had to do a little bit of changing around, which I may do an update video and just let you to kind of see where my just so see where my progress is. But that's it. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Please go like, subscribe. Um, please follow me on uh, YouTube and Instagram at Fix It Daniel. I really do appreciate it. Um, I know this stuff isn't is the greatest thing, but I am just a regular person um, trying to show you guys some cool stuff. All this stuff that I do, I could easily do it off camera and not even show nobody. But you guys like the stuff that I've done. You've seen a lot of the cool fixes that I've done and helped you guys out, which is what is more important is by sharing my knowledge with you guys instead of just keeping it to myself and no one knowing anything. My neighbors have seen what I've done and they've helped they've asked me to help them out with their cars and fix them and I've done it and I haven't done videos on it but I just helped them off to the side so they know that I can work on cars and you guys know I can work on cars. I just don't have a whole lot of the um, comings in for, for helps but um, but who knows? Uh, maybe that down the road, things will turn around and change. But guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good and blessed day. And I'm going to see you in the next fix. Until then, peace.